Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you I said, Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. I said, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line. Now. Oh, just call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, call him up, call him up, tell him. I say, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line. Now. Praise you, just tell him what you want. Oh, if you want more praise, you just tell him what you want. Oh, tell if you want more praise, you just tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line. Oh, just call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, call him. Call him up, tell him. Oh, I said, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main line. That if you want to cry to say, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want to cry to say, tell him what you want. Oh, said if you want a prayer to pray. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that day. Like, oh, you just call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Oh, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what. I said, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that day. Oh, good and gracious God, we come before your throne of grace one more time. We come before your grace because we know that you will have everything we need. Now, Father, we bow down before thee, thanking you for allowing us to get up one more time and the blood was still running warm in our veins. Father, we we thank you because we were able to put on our own clothes this morning. And for that cause, we just have to say thank you, Jesus. For you are so good and you are so kind and you are better to us than we are to our own selves. And Father, now as we go through this perilous land, we must all travel. And if we travel, we should travel with you. We ask you to be on our side. Strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down and teach us all the things that you would have us to do. Father, we know you are the forefront for us and you allow everything that happens to us. But it's not because that you're evil or you don't love us or you don't care. But Father, you did it through your son, Jesus, who came down here and bear the sins of the world that we might be free. Father, we thank you for his suffering and we thank you for his dying. For he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. And for that cause, we have to say thank you. But Father, we know that while we are traveling through this land, sometimes we're going to have pain and sometimes we're going to have trouble. 
Sometimes we're going to have things that we don't understand. But, Father, you still hold us in your hand. For when that time comes, when all our suffering and all our pains shall be pushed to the side, and you said you would bring us into that land that your son went to build a home that we will be there together to suffer no more. And we will sing hallelujah and never goodbye. For these, we thank you, Father. And now, Father, as we think about our loved ones who have lost someone, that's a part of your plan. Help us to understand that. It's not that you don't want it to happen, but it's because it's your plan and it must happen. Help us, teach us how to accept those things that you allow. And then, Father, after we've said our last prayer, the study wall no more, we ask you to please, sir, receive us in your kingdom, your servant's prayer. Amen, amen, amen.
Amen. Thank God for the exciting opening song, Victory, Victory is Mine. Let us stand now for our responsive reading, the 122nd Psalm. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feast shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Will the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord? For there are set thorns of judgment, thorns of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the Lord, house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. 122nd Psalm. Amen. It's now time for altar prayer. Whosoever will, let them come. Wherever you are, if you're riding along, pull along the side, out of harm's way. If you're at home, you can stand wherever you are there. Because if God give you the opportunity to stand and you're able to stand, you ought to recognize him in any way you can because it is he who give us strength. It is he who have brought us, protected us, and guided us and led us through the valleys that we've all had to go through. He have given us the strength to go up our mountains of despair and to come down knowing that God was with you. Let us pray. O oh, eternal God, it's once again that we are few, your humble servant, have come together once again to give you glory and honor that you so richly deserve. We come now, God, another time, another moment, another hour, to express our concern to you for, your, for giving us life, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength, giving us a mind to serve and to be available when you call. We come now, Lord, because you are there for us. We are empty pitchers before a full fountain. We come, Lord, because we need you. We're standing in a time of need and troubles. Our world is in trouble. Our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, state, nation, and the world. We are confronted with evil on every hand. But Lord, you said you would not leave us or forsake us. And we are depending on your word. Your word has been able to stand through the generations of time. And I know it won't fail now. We pray for those who are sick and afflicted in any way. Pray for our young people, God. We pray, Lord, that you would sustain them during the hours of bereavement and trying times. Have mercy, Lord. Lord, we pray for this service today that you will anoint it in the powers of your Holy Ghost. Be able to feel your presence. Be able to know that you are still available and you already answered our prayers. Thank you for this devotion. We thank you for those who are singing. We thank you for all who are here this morning. We thank you for those who are listening in wherever they are. We give you praise and thanks for them. And then, Lord, we know you eventually all of our praying and singing and shouting and preaching and teaching will be over. It'll be your time to call and I was the answer. Lord, please, sir, we pray that we'll be able to answer in the affirmative. Say, yes, Lord. When you were sick, we came to see about you. Yes, Lord. When you were in prison, we came to visit you. Yes, Lord. When we were burning down, you lifted us up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to be able to answer into the affirmative. And then we want to hear you give us that good news 
good news from you, God, saying, servant of God, well done. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith, and you finished your course. What I promise you, come on up a little higher, for there is a crown of life waiting for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of your benefits. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. While we're praying on our altar call, we also would like to offer prayer uh, for the tithes and offerings. We pray that you continue to bless the Lord and bless the church with your tithes and with your offerings. If you're listening in and have not had an opportunity to come by, we pray that you will go online to Givelify and you'll be able to make your contributions through Givelify. We thank you. Our Father God, we pray for those who have given their tithes and their offerings. Pray that you bless them in a very powerful way. And we'll give you the praise and honor that you so richly deserve. For it is you who have given everything that we have. We only ask that you return a few of our blessings back to you. And for those who have followed your rules and your order, we pray that you would have mercy. And those who have not, we pray, God, that they will soon come to realization that your word is still your word. When all is said and done, we pray that you receive us again in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Deacon Dennis, you ready? All right. Deacon Dennis will now give us our announcements. Make sure this is on the same level that it was before, Deacon. Deacon Mitchell. Make sure this mic is on the same level that it's been. Thank you. Good morning, saints, and thank you again for joining us uh, this morning, this third Sunday morning here at the St. Mary Primitive Baptist Church on Georgia Street, and here are today's announcements. This coming uh, Tuesday night prayer meeting at 6 o'clock p.m., we will be honored to have with us the Reverend Dr. Joseph Wright pastor of the Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church here in Tallahassee, Florida, and president of the Tallahassee Interdenominal Ministerial Alliance, who will expound on our scripture theme. And we ask that you, all of you would be uh, so kind as to join us here on this coming Tuesday evening. A weekly Bible study will be held on Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. immediately following our prayer meeting, Elder Kenton Floyd is the facilitator. On a sad note to all of our St. Mary members, one of our long and faithful members, Brother Joe Kilpatrick, transitioned on this past Friday at TMH. We ask that you would please join Pastor Farrell in offering condolences to Mother Jessina Jugger Kilpatrick, Sister Flossie Denmark, Sister Jackie Kilpatrick, and the entire Kilpatrick family during this time of bereavement. And we ask that you would keep each and every one of them in your thoughts and prayers. Graveside services for Brother Kilpatrick is scheduled for this coming Saturday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. at the Mount Olive No. 1 Primitive Baptist Church Cemetery in Crawfordville, Florida. To Pastor Farrell and the St. Mary Church family, saying thank you just doesn't seem like enough to show how much your caring and thoughtfulness have meant. But though the words are simple, we hope that you know how much warmth and appreciation come with them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for Mother Mamie Jackson.
The second shut-in includes Mother Valerie Jugger, Mother Tommy Lee Cooper, Mother Abby Isom, Sister Fl Flossie Denmark, Brother Joseph Dennis, Brother Sam Turner, Sister Osime Carter, Brother Anthony Jugger, Brother Laney Chooks, Sister Ronnie Barron, Sister Michelle Wesley, Sister Shirley Kane, Brother Marcus Farling, Farlin, and we ask that you would keep all of them in your thoughts and prayers as well. Deacon Al Dennis reporting, Elder Dr. Ernest Farrell, pastor. Thank you, ma'am and sirs. Thank you. I want to um, acknowledge birthdays. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge the birthday. I think we did, Sister Reese Tamiri. Did, did I do yours last Sunday? One more time on her. Happy birthday to <laughs> Sister Reese. Uh, Elder Charles Hintley, Sister Brenda Bryant, um, Darwin Mitchell, brother. Did I say that right, Dick? Dorian Mitchell, uh, Dorothy Floyd, and Gloria Henderson. And I think we'll be back before we get, we get to Chloe Myers, but if we don't, we'll say it now as well. Also, Sister Pat Thurman's birthday is today, so we give Pat a happy birthday shout out today for my, for my church. We want to wish all of you who are listening in, if you had a birthday today, even though we may not have it listed, we hope that you would have an exciting and prosperous and uh, birthday today as well. Amen. I want to thank uh, our ensemble again. I want to thank them every time we come because they are so important. And most of them are the same volunteers, and I know, and I want you to know that I appreciate what you're doing. The church appreciates you, uh, and those who are listening in appreciate you. And so thank you so much. You want to thank our musicians and uh, for their presence. They also, um, I, I, I don't remember any of them missing uh, any time since we've been going through this uh, pandemic. Uh, they've been right here doing their jobs and making sure that the church have the music that it was so deserved. Amen. Deacon uh, Harvey and Deacon Bowens and Sister Jackie, who's... Uh, having a real tough time right now. We want to know that uh, we are praying for you because we know how important and how special your brother was to you. And so we want you to know that we, you are in our prayers. Thank, uh, thank you for that. Deacon Dennis and Deacon and our finance committee that's always been so faithful to this church and uh, we don't have to wait for our report at the end of the service. They already have it prepared. So we thank you for that. And uh, Samaria, hello. Thanks for being here, sweetie. <laughs> OK, God bless you. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody. And I want to thank our listeners, because uh, every Sunday, you have been so faithful. Our church members have been so faithful. Uh, to listen in on our program and our services, their services, really. It's all of our services that God allowed us, even though we're not in the church. Uh, the church is in us, but but you have been so faithful. And if you're listening to me, I hope you are today. I want to thank you for for being so faithful to your church. And, uh, and, and God will continue to bless you. And I pray that the Lord will send his Holy Spirit to this day. Uh, that you would know and know that he's still available, that he still sits high, and he looks low. He know everybody by our names. You can't fool him. If you change your name, he know who you are anyway. Amen, somebody. So I thank God for all of you. Uh, I want to thank those people who are listening in on Tuesday. Uh, if you know someone of our church who are not listening in or they don't have the information, please share it with them because... Uh, we want everybody to, uh, the, the prayer meeting has been such a success. We have had over 400 prayers that have been offered over the last eight, ten months. Amen. Uh, plus the prayers of the preachers who have spoken as well. So 
we, we've had at least f close to 40 ministers who have uh, shared with us the, uh, the scripture themes. Uh, and this year we started a new scripture theme, uh, and we, we hope and pray that it will have an impact on your life as well, to put on the whole arm of God. And I think that if you put it all on, you can be, you can be protected. Even when the people come in the town and want to do strange and difficult stuff, you'll be able to be protected because God is on your side. I also want to remind you to be very careful this weekend uh, because there's some people out there that don't like y'all. Amen. Don't like us. And they're doing some strange things. So we have to be very careful. Uh, and, but God is still there. He's still protecting us. Uh, and we want to make sure, pray for our president-elect and vice president-elect because uh, definitely this is going to be a tough time between now and then inauguration. And we're going to have to pray for their protection because they're going to need protection. These people are stopping nothing to get to them. Also, our representative to us, uh, Congressman Lawson, who represents us in this area. And we want to make sure that we uh, pray for his protection. Because they want, they they love to have a, a congressman. They can get one. Amen. Yeah, they love that. And so we got to make sure that we pray one for the other. That God will continue to bless us and protect protect us. Now let me call your attention to the scripture for today. It's taken from the book of. Hebrews. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forceful to entering or entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds, are bound with them, and them which suffer adversity. As being yourselves also in the body, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. Uh, he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may bodily say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have ruled over you, who have spoken unto you the words of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for his word. As the choir prepare now for our hymn of preparation, let us put our minds and bodies and our spirits towards God. Thank you.
and I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm so glad. I'm glad about it. He gave me health and strength, and I'm glad about I'm it. Glad about oh, it. Oh, And I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm so glad. I'm glad about it. He woke me up early this morning, and I'm glad about it. And I'm glad, I'm glad about it. I'm glad, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I thank you, thank you, Jesus. And I'm glad, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. You've been good to me. Brought us from a long way. With so my health and my strength. So when my burden was heavy. So Whoa. He picked me up. So turned me around. So oh, I'm so glad. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That song reminds me of a few days ago when we used to sing those songs like that. We don't, we don't sing them no more. People have gotten too sophisticated. Amen. They don't believe in amazing grace anymore. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand, cast a wishful eye. I don't believe on those old songs that brought our forefathers here today. Songs that have been so inspirational to, particular to our race of people because we have lived the experiences. We've gone through the valleys. Help me somebody. We, we've had to climb the high mountains. We, we've, had, we've had to go through things that Many others have not experienced. And so we can sing songs like this and others with a great deal of power, a great deal of experience, because we know who God is. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. We, 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 we don't have to, uh, old folks say, we don't have to reckon about it, because we know what we have been through. We know what God has brought us through. Sometimes we have a tendency, my brothers and sisters, this new generation, uh, to forget or have not really thought about it because uh, they have not experienced what we can tell them, that the God that we serve is available to whosoever will that call on him. Amen. Thank God for all of you this morning, and I thank God for those who are listening in, and I pray that he will bless you through the word, and that the word will inspire you to inspire others. Amen. <clears throat> I want to call your attention to one verse of the scripture that I read from that I'd like to lift up today that those who hear and listen might be able to use it for the uplifting of your, of your life. Somebody who may not know the Lord today may be able to connect with this word. In verse... Number eight, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Amen. I want, I want to talk from the subject, same God. Same God. Same God. Amen. I want to 
we assure all of you listening in, I want to reassure you that the same God that we're talking about and his only begotten son, uh, that he is still on the throne of God. There's no eviction notices. He don't have to move out after serving a certain period of time. For he's God today, he's God yesterday, and he's God forever. There are no turn limits with this God. There are no turn limits. You don't have to, you don't have to vote on him. Uh, you don't have to worry about Democrat or Republican independence uh, because the God that we serve uh, have no respect of person, no respect of position, for he is God that sits high. He look low. He know every individual uh, by the strands of the hair on your head, even if there's none. He know where they should be. Because he's God. He's God. He's God. And this, this, this text is about uh, knowing that he is God uh, not only for a little while, but from, from days are past and gone. That he's God that uh, have, does, does not change. He's, he's, he's the same God uh, of yesterday, today, and, and forever. And so this, this text that is taken from Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verses 8, is, has, the, the, the author is not really, uh, a name is not really known. It's not like the other letters that Paul wrote and uh, start out with the apostle of Jesus Christ. Or uh, this 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 Hebrew does not provide the author's name. Or uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't uh, until you read through it, you don't really pick it up as a letter itself uh, because Hebrews jump right into it. He he gets right into uh, the letter to. He gets right into the message. Uh, he, 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 don't, he, don't, he, don't, he, he don't have to study about who he, who he is because apparently that's not important to Hebrews in this text. But because of the importance that it means to me and to you and the words of this letter and the words of this text has a historical value that help us through our ups and downs because we know that it didn't just start overnight. That the God that we serve, uh, if you look back in historical perspective, you know that uh, when God put his seal on the Ten Commandments and when he spoke on Exodus 20 and clearly defined who he is. My brother and sister, he said, I'm the Lord, thy God. I, I'm, I'm the Lord, thy God. I, I'm the one. We don't have a lot of folks in here, but you can still say amen. I'm the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt. This yesterday, this yesterday, this yesterday. I'm the one that took your feet out of the marrow and the muck of life and took you out of slavery and, and put your feet on solid ground. Took you out and brought you out of Egypt to the promised land. And I, I gave you an opportunity uh, to, 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 to come through a Red Sea and open it up that you can come across with dry land. And, 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 and I made a highway for you. I, I'm the one that did that. It was not those other gods that, that y'all brought from Egypt on the other side of the river. No, no, it's not those gods. For they're God with a small G. But I'm the Lord, thy God. This is from yesterday. This is what happened yesterday. The text talks about three different times. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, if you will, even if it's the ever. It's, it's, it's those three things that I want to really talk about because of their importance, because of the impact that I believe they have on us when we know that our God does not change. He's the same God 
We know that our God is always available to hear and answer our prayers. We know that our God, our God, the God that brought him out, our God, still holds a range of life in his hand. Isn't, isn't that reassuring when you know that you know that you know without any conversation that I serve a God that, that's forever, that a God that of, of our weary years and silent tears, our God, our God, our lily of the valley, our way maker from yesterday, today, and forever. And brothers and sisters, if he only lasted yesterday, we'd be in trouble. If he, if he only lasted yesterday uh, in the Old Testament, we would be in trouble. We would never have made it this far because the God that we serve is from yesterday. And not only did he serve yesterday, but he continued on up, up until this day. This God that we serve, my brothers and sisters, I want, I want to make sure that we are on the same wavelength when it comes to yesterday God. So when, 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 when God clearly defined who he was on Mount Sinai and, and when, he, when he brought him up to the mountain and Moses went and got the Ten Commandments and, and God spoke to him and God spoke to us when he said those commandments and those, those were clearly of yesterday. And so he said that thou shalt have no other gods before me. And there were plenty of other gods. They had, they had plenty of gods. You, 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 know, you know, you remember when, 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 when Joshua went on, went on the mountain, when God asked, when he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, he, he knew who the difference between other gods and the Lord because he knew that God was able to get him through when other gods could not make it through. God was able to get him through when troubles was everywhere and other gods could not come through, even when it was surely a test, even when there was a test that God had to let them know who he was. God had to make sure that, that his, his word was available and that they knew who he was. In 1 Kings 18 and 24, call ye on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord thy God, and the one that answers by fire. Y'all gonna help me on this? He said, the one that answers by fire, you serve him because, because, but, but and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to call on your God. Amen, somebody. I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to, we're, going to, we're going to cut this bullocks up. We're going to put them on the altar. And we're, going to, we're going to fix it up and we're going to dress it up. We're going to make sure that everything is in place. And you call on your God, the one that answers by fire. That's the Lord God whom we ought to serve. If you know that you know your God can answer, your God can deliver, your God can make a way out of no way, when you know that you know that you're sure about him, the God of yesterday, have mercy, Lord. In, in Kings, in Kings, first Kings, as I said earlier, he said he, he gave them an opportunity to try, try their God out and and their God failed them. And so when the, when the time for, 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 for his God to perform, and he called on his God, and, he, and God, the God that he called on answered by fire. Burn up the, the, the altar and put, burn up the water that was around the trenches of the altar. Burn it all up. And, and it was able to show that the God that answered by fire will come through when you need him most. I recommend to you today that you know who he is. He is available to hear and answer your call. Have mercy, Lord. And thank God for him. Thank God for our God. Thank God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So here we are. Here we are. We, we, we've gone through the gods of yesterday who still the same gods of today. But I want to I want to talk about the God of today. Said that you are you are that gave that reassured us in John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This this is the God of today. This is the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came down forty two generations that we might have a right to the tree of life. Those who sit in the shadows of darkness will be able to see the light. Those those who have gone through the muck and mile of life. They have an opportunity now to turn their life around. God has made it available so that, that if you call on him, that he would answer your prayer. The God of today, 
that Jesus Christ who lived, who served, who died, who was resurrected from the dead and had declared that, declared that all power in heaven and earth was in his hand. That God, I'm talking about Jesus of today, available today as he said he would. I come that those who, can, who, who do not have the light in their life, I am the light of the world. He said, ye are the light of the world. He gave us the authority to be light so that our good works can be seen and others, God can give glory to God for those who know that light and know who it is. God said, I am the salt of the earth. Salt, if it loses saltiness, is not good for nothing but to be trampled on by the foot of men. But when the salt is working, my brothers and sisters, you seize on your meat. You shouldn't use too much now, though. Get you a salt substitute. But what, but the real the real story about it is because it's safer. It, it's able to 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 be an anesthetic, uh, anesthetic that we able. It's able to be able to to heal wounds and be able to. Back in the day when they when they didn't have refrigeration, they would take that ham that they they, they had cut up and they had put in the, in the, in the, in the in the storehouse or in 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 the smokehouse and they would wrap it down in salt because. The salt will conceal it. It will be able to hold fast. It will be able to stand through the storm. And when, when you need it, it'll be there for you because, because the salt has made it able and cured it. So you're able to have that ham that you shouldn't be eating now. Thank you, Jesus. And so he said, you are the light of the world. A city that sits on a hill cannot be hid. This is today. This is Jesus who we love, who gave his life, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He said that you, 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 are, you are all of these things because I came, I lived, I died, and was resurrected with all power and heaven and earth in my hand. And finally, Hebrews said, Jesus, forever and forever. In other words, my brothers, after you, have examined the history. After you know some of the historical events that happened, now you have you have yesterday and you have Jesus Christ, the God of now. And then you have finally Jesus Christ, the God uh, forever. In other words, even though he was crucified, he's still here. Even though, even though he gave his life up for us, he's still available. Even, even though, even though uh, they, he laid his life down, nobody was able to take his life. He said, nobody take my life. I, I laid it down and I picked it back up. When he picked it back up, he picked it up for you and he picked it up for me. And so, so he's available uh, to hear our cry. Any time we need him, not just yesterday, not just today, but he's available even forever. You, you don't believe it, I recommend him to you today that you would seek and ye shall find. You shall ask and it will be given. You can knock on the door and the Jesus of tomorrow and the Jesus forever is available. I know he's available because I talked with him just this morning. And uh, I know that I'm not the only one to talk with him. Why? Uh, I know somebody been talking to the Lord uh, on behalf of people you love. And somebody been talking to the Lord for those who are bereaved. And somebody who know the Lord is available to answer cries. They know that not only was he a God of yesterday, not only was he Abraham's and Isaac and Jacob's God, 
Not only was he Noah's God, Lord have mercy, but uh, he's the same God that um, made a way out of no way. He's the same God that uh, got water out of a rock. He's the same God that let the ravens feed in the midnight hours. He's the same God that you can call on anytime, anywhere. Won't he hear you cry? Won't he catch you before you fall? You can call on Jesus. He will come through for you. Won't he do it? He's available. Hebrew said, Hebrew tells us right now, he's available yesterday. What you mean, preacher? Yesterday, I called on him. Yesterday, he heard my cry. Today, I call on him. Today, he heard my cry. Tomorrow, I'm going to call on him. I'm still going to call him. I encourage you to call on him. He will come through for you. He will open doors for you. Won't he do it? Yes! I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I love the Lord. He pitied my groan. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Thank you! I wish I had somebody could help me thank him today. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fixing my heart, fixing my mind, fixing me. Oh, fix it, Jesus. Like you said you would. Fix it, Jesus. You can do it. I know you can do it. I know. Oh. Same God. Yesterday today and forever same God one day will it be over the same God he said he's available to wipe away all tears from your eyes same God he said there be no more crying there be no more tears every day gonna be like Sunday Sabbath will have no end Thank you, Jesus. Same God. Same God. Promise to be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, come before you once again to express our thanks and love for you, for bringing us safe. We pray for protection as we leave this place. We pray that you would be with us. Stand by us. Hold us up. Keep our enemies away. When trouble come, Lord, show us around it. When ditches are dug for us, lead us around it. And Lord, if we have to go through it, pull us up out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for those who are bereaved, those who lost loved ones. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick, afflicted in any way. Pray that you would offer the right prescription to help them through. We pray, Lord, for the protection of our community, those who come to do evil or harm, that you will protect us. Pray for our nation. Protect those who are in leadership. Pray for the transition of the new president of this country. Pray there for that protection. Pray that you would have mercy. Lord, we pray for the protection of those who are in leadership positions all over the world. 
particularly in Congress, that you will please have mercy upon them. We need you. We cannot make it by ourselves. As we leave these doors today, and those who are at home, those who are riding along, pray for their protection. Lord, we know that you, you do sit high and you look low, and you know what our needs are. Help us through our valleys. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Now may we look to the Lord and receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let us all say amen. God bless you. Go and sin no more.